Hi everyone, this is Deb Tim, a Canadian girl, and this is the second episode of the series I'm doing on aquatic plants. So today we're going to look at the green kababa, so please stay tuned. This has been my favorite aquatic plant since I began my planted tank five weeks ago. I love how fast it grows and how pretty it looks. Now it definitely has some competition with the parrot feather. At the same garden center where I got the parrot feather, I also picked up a couple mesh bags of this lovely green kabamba. I am so new to all this aquatic plants and planted tanks, so this series is really for my benefit as well as yours. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do in researching each plant. The Kambamba plant is a very popular aquatic plant being a favorite among freshwater aquarium hobbyists. This pretty aquatic plant is indigenous to South America, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina. The Kambamba is also found growing along the coastal United States. One interesting fact I read is that it is often eaten as a vegetable in some areas. This beautiful plant is quite adaptive as it lives in swampy, stagnant areas, as well as freshwater rivers and streams, lakes and ponds, and even ditches. It is a seed plant, but seems to spread easily, reproducing vegetatively as well. It is fast becoming invasive as spreading into new water bodies is on the rise. It is such a fast growing plant that it has been documented to grow up to two inches in one day. Therefore, it makes wonderful background plants for your aquariums due to its growth potential and lovely coloration. Actually, I did this test and measured my kabamba, and within 24 hours, I kid you not, it was two inches taller. I was shocked. Kabamba is sold under many names, including green kabamba, Carolina fanwort, Brazilian fanwort, or simply fanwort. Although green kabamba is the most common, it can be found in reddish purple, being not as common or easily found as the green variety. I purchased some at PetSmart. The plants were a lighter green, shorter and bushier than the second ones that I purchased at the garden center. Being a stem plant, when purchasing kabamba, you want to find stems that are at least six inches in length. They are often tied together with an elastic just to keep the stems together, but should be removed when planting. The leaves on the healthy plant should be thick and lush and a good rich color and have evidence of new growth. You will see fine white little roots and even some small buds or flowers coming. Being a beginner myself with planted aquariums and aquatic plants, I was very surprised the kambamba is not considered easy to grow and not recommended for newbies like myself. One critical point is that they don't do well in low-tech tanks. Kambamba requires higher quality lighting, especially if you have the reddish colored plants. It's not a simple matter of leaving the lights on longer either. They require higher wattage per gallon to flourish. Without the proper lighting requirements, this plant will look good for the first few days and then begin to deteriorate, breaking apart and dying off. Along with lighting issues, the kambamba plant is also in need of more iron and other minerals and will benefit from CO2 supplements as well. While this certainly does not sound like a good beginner plant for me, but so far it seems to be doing very well. Because it's a delicate plant, some fish species would not be well suited to live with kabamba. The appropriate fish should be non-aggressive, passive, and gentle. 
Some fish and snails will even find this plant appetizing. Another aspect to consider is the water must be kept clean with very little movement as any stronger flow could uproot it. Kalmama has soft, silky leaves that are wonderful for snagging bits of food, perfect for shrimp. Their root system is also delicate and can easily be damaged if transplanting. It's vital that you do not pull the stems from the soil, rather scoop up the soil surrounding the roots so as not to disturb or injure them. You can allow the substrate to fall off once you have the plant in hand. Care must be taken when planting kambamba. Rinse the stems gently under water and get rid of any bits of loose leaves. Trim the stems of any broken or cracked areas as they will not survive and should be removed prior to going into your aquarium to save yourself some unsightly mess. Plant the stems about an inch apart, giving them room to develop a healthy root system, being gentle and not packing the soil too firmly, yet firm enough to hold the plant in place. Kambamba can also be floated instead of planting. It will be closer to the light source, so it will grow faster, although the floating plants don't look as nice as when they're planted. They will develop roots and flowers, keeping the plant healthy and your tank free from overgrowth. Providing the kambamba is a success, you must gently trim the stems. If the stems are at least three inches long, they can be floated or planted in your substrate. After finding all this information, I'm a little intimidated by the kambamba in my planted paradise. So far, it's doing very well and growing like crazy. But you know, like most aspects of this wonderful hobby, some things work for one person and not for another. So here we are. It's with plants the same as with fish. Good thing I'm keeping my hands out and allowing things to develop on their own. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series. It's always fun to learn. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.